Calimera, oh, I, so I, I got the photos. I, I understand you had a, a proper Cretan uh, welcome. Absolutely. So normally I, normally I should be the one uh, welcoming you. Good morning, it's uh, the evening, I can say now until, until 4 in the morning. But it's good, good to have you. It is too important not to spend time here also on business. How many people? Close to me. Close to me. Yeah, but that is politically. Politically, it has all. Well, Manfred, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be able to welcome you uh, to Crete. Uh, as you probably know, uh, I am from Crete. Uh, and uh, when we discussed with Vangelis, who is also from Crete, where we should uh, 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 have the study days, there was only one choice, Crete, of course. Uh, so we're glad that uh, you are here. And I'm sure that you will have um, a productive uh, two and a half days, uh, uh, discussion days, but also an opportunity to explore uh, the beauty uh, of the island, maybe um, jump into the sea and certainly have a chance to maybe visit the mainland and some of the stunning archaeological sites that are very close uh, to the hotel where we are hosting uh, this, uh, this event. Uh, uh, Manfred, uh, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. I uh, thought I'd keep my remarks uh, uh, relatively brief so that we can also have an opportunity to answer some of the questions that, uh, th that you may have. But I must uh, tell you that you have shown remarkable resilience uh, in terms of insisting uh, to come to Crete in spite of the many difficulties, an earthquake, uh, uh, you know, another um, uh, sort of cycle uh, of the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, but speaking of, um, uh, of resilience, uh, I would just like to share with you a, a few thoughts uh, on, on political resilience and what uh, we have been able uh, to achieve uh, uh, in Greece over these uh, past uh, three years because I think that uh, what we have been able to do in Greece may be relevant within the broader context, the broader discussion that we're having at the level of our European uh, political uh, family. As you probably remember, uh, we were uh, elected uh, to power in um, uh, July 2019 after experimenting with the populism of the left for four years. Uh, and we came to power with, uh, with a very clear mandate. In the meantime, of course, we had to deal, as many other European countries, with all sorts uh, of crisis. In our case, it was not just uh, COVID uh, and uh, the current spike in inflation. We also had to deal with the migration crisis, Turkey instrumentalizing refugees and migrants starting in March uh, 2020, and of course also with uh, uh, being a force of stability uh, in a very unstable geopolitical neighborhood. But in spite uh, of us spending a lot of time dealing with crises which were not of our own making, we have been uh, successful uh, in implementing our electoral agenda. And our number one um, focus when we came into power was to make sure that uh, we change the fabric of the Greek economy, that we deliver growth, jobs, and better income to all Greeks. And uh, indeed, I took note of what you said, uh, Manfred, that uh, Greece is no longer the black sheep of the European family. And it does give us um, satisfaction when uh, we read in the foreign press uh, interesting stories about how Greece is currently buckling the trend uh, and is doing particularly well at a time uh, when the global economy uh, is currently being plunged into a recession. There was a, a very uh, interesting and flattering article yesterday uh, in the Financial Times uh, mentioning seven countries uh, that are currently performing extremely well in terms of their um, uh, economic uh, performance. One of them um, uh, was, uh, was Greece, and of course, this gives us uh, you know, satisfaction that we have been able to deliver when it comes to our fundamental promise, which was to uh, put Greece on a high growth uh, trajectory, uh, bring down uh, unemployment, attract uh, foreign direct uh, uh, investment, and make sure that the Greek economy becomes again uh, as competitive as it can possibly uh, be. If you look at our growth numbers, um, we will agree exceed a growth of 5% this year. Uh, we could reach close to uh, 6% uh, and uh, we're estimating a growth uh, in excess of 2% for next year at a time when many European countries may be faced uh, with a recession. 
we've been able to bring down unemployment by more than five percentage uh, points. We had a record year in terms of attracting foreign uh, direct uh, investment, and we've been able to diversify uh, the Greek economy beyond our traditional pillars, you know, tourism, agriculture, to attract significant investment uh, in renewables, but also in uh, new areas such as uh, technology. Uh, all the Greek American, all the American technology companies have uh, invested uh, uh, in Greece, uh, and Greece is becoming. Uh, very rapidly a technology uh, hub for the entire region. At the same time, we focused a lot on issues which are very close to our, the heart of our political family related to security uh, and defense. After 10 years of underinvestment uh, in our defense forces, we've launched a program of making sure um, we add uh, the necessary capacities uh, to our uh, defense forces, while at the same time uh, also dealing with a very unpredictable neighbor. We focused a lot uh, on making sure that we put in place a different policy regarding migration. Uh, we can actually protect our borders with respect to fundamental rights. We've been able to bring down migration flows by more than 80% uh, in the Aegean. We've essentially killed the smugglers' networks uh, that uh, profited from uh, human trafficking uh, from the Aegean coast uh, uh, of Turkey uh, to, our, uh, to our islands. Uh, and uh, we've also called out Turkey uh, uh, in terms of its practices of instrumentalizing migrants and refugees um, uh, for its own geopolitical purposes. And at the same time, we've also implemented a series of reforms um, uh, in terms of uh, making sure we upgrade the technological capacity uh, of, of the state. You can now interact with the state uh, digitally um, uh, for most of your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, affairs. We've invested a lot in education. We've invested a lot in health. And we have really focused on making sure that uh, the new growth that we envision brings down uh, inequalities uh, and promotes uh, social fairness. So we're really talking about an inclusive growth, which of course uh, makes no compromises when it comes to protecting uh, our environment. Our green agenda has been one of the most proactive uh, in, in Europe, and we intend to keep it uh, that way um, for the foreseeable uh, future. So we are really uh, entering uh, the electoral cycle, I believe, from a position of strength. We're still ahead in the polls by anywhere between 8 and 10 percentage uh, points. And I think when the time will come uh, in the spring of 2023 um, uh, to make our case to the Greek people, I think we have a reasonable chance uh, of making the case that we kept our electoral promises, that Greece is now in a much better position than it was when we took over in 2019, and I'm confident that the Greek people will give us a second mandate to complete the job that we have started. <laughs> Few words uh, on the challenges ahead. Uh, as uh, uh, all uh, European uh, you know, heads of state and government were preoccupied, dear Manfred, with one question, and that one question is the rising cost uh, uh, of living, uh, inflation, which has been the product uh, of rising costs of energy as a result of the instrumentalization uh, of, of gas by, by Russia. We have all uh, put in place uh, aggressive support programs um, uh, to support businesses uh, and uh, households uh, with the rising cost of energy. But uh, I want to make the case that this is not going to be enough. I'm afraid that Europe has not been able, as of yet, to come up with a concrete response uh, when it comes to the problem of energy. Greece has been actively lobbying with many other European countries um, for a cap uh, on the price of gas, which will include both LNG coming into Europe, but also the piped gas from Russia uh, into Europe, and has been gaining uh, additional support by other European countries. We're not quite there yet in terms of uh, uh, convincing the Commission that this is a path uh, we need to pursue. But unless uh, we get this right, unless we add to the domestic firepower that our budgets can provide, the European firepower uh, of a coordinated response, I am afraid that we're in for a very difficult winter and that social cohesion uh, will actually begin to be challenged. If that is the case, then we will give more opportunities for populists to arise ahead of the electoral cycle of 2024, and we will make our job of convincing our electorates that we are credible forces for change that much more difficult. So uh, when you think and when you discuss uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow about European responses 
to the question of inflation. Please add into your discussion ideas and thoughts about how we can coordinate our European response when it comes to tackling the issues related to the cost of energy, because this is the number one problem that we will be facing uh, over the next winter. Let, let, me, uh, let me conclude before I take uh, any questions that you uh, may have uh, with the commitment of Nea Demokratia, dear Manfred, to support uh, the EPP uh, in light of the electoral cycle uh, of, um, uh, of 2024. Uh, we have proven uh, in Greece that you can deliver credible and inclusive growth while being patriotically sensitive when it comes to issues of foreign policy, uh, defense uh, and migration, and thus widen our electoral appeal at the expense of populists both from the right and from the left. If these lessons are in any way helpful for our overall European campaign, I'm always ready to share them with you. You can count on our support, and we make sure that Nea Demokratia leads the effort in order to strengthen, even further strengthen, the position of the EPP within European um, uh, politics. And before then, I'm sure that the EPP will stand by us uh, as we fight for a second term in the elections that will take place in Greece in 2023. Again, thank you very much for your attention. Ready to take any questions that you may have.